Hello everybody, Anthony is here and this video is about a cool little way of creating brushes, brush rock alphas from rocks inside 3D code in a way that I haven't seen anybody doing it and I think I'll be the first to show it because this is a really cool, I would even call it a little invention on how to use different shaders to create this stuff. First thing first, I need to have some kind of mesh to start with, so I'm not covering how I've created this 3D scan. It comes from here, from Photograph, a pack I've uploaded some time ago, uh, doing a photos of location and then going out and also you know, doing photogrammetry of certain rocks and getting just samples of the mesh out. There, are, there is a bunch of tutorials online on how to do your own photogrammetry stuff, so this is really not about that. So once this stuff has been imported inside 3D code, You can just grab it off the screen, your mesh, if you have a proper material setup. So by default, if you go into Tune sections, you have this uh, material that's called the Tune Silhouette. It's slightly modified here, usually it just looks black, but anyway, you can pick any Tune material, honestly. Uh, click on that, so you get this kind of look, right? And if you go into Edit Permanent Shader Options, you have this window right here, and this is where you have to be a little bit inventive and play around with the options. So essentially go either you black out your color or you make your color white, your contour color white and your shadow color white and then you make your fog color black. Then you have to play around with the fog density and how far from you it is and all these options around here. So essentially you get it out uh, this level is pretty good and really it's just all about playing with it and it all depends on the scale of your object because it can be different and it changes depending depending on the zoom it changes as well Let's and let me check out my my guy right here I did so you can just copy these um, uh, parameters. I really was only playing around with fog density, fog power, foreground, fade. These are three main. Nothing else is really... A, I might have just played around with that, but it didn't really affect anything. So this stuff is the most important. Uh, so color can be black, fog can be white, or vice versa. Doesn't matter. And once we have it, we can just do a screen grab of this guy and invert it inside Photoshop and by screen grabbing I mean just using any kind of snapshot in software right so I'll just screen grab it here so I'll just play around with levels here there's not enough of depth really to this uh, image I mean it's 8-bit image it's not a 16 and 32-bit image so it will go it will get you some like this kind of bending effect of bending and here we'll just flip it over so I can see stuff going on so and then if I run a little smooth on the edges I'll get a better alpha and it's fairly important to have some smoothing options around so you don't have too much noise going on and then I will go and just frame it in black well, I'll check first of all check the dimensions of this uh, square uh, a square you usually want to have it as a squarish alpha can be fairly important for certain applications like substance for example always um, takes only square ones and it, if you input something that's rectangular it will try to square it up and stretch the texture I'm not sure about 3D code. I think it does uh, the same thing. So now I have this alpha. Can make it a bit more extreme. And I'll just do this. And just. And then I'll just export it as a PNG and I bring it over to 3D code. So I've added my alpha in this tab, an alpha tab, 
I have my own tab for um, rock alphas. So I've created just this new file, which is a sphere. I'll just make it a bit bigger and denser. So to a half a million triangles. And I'll pick my guy. Again, make it bigger. And I'll switch to a move tool because move tool is really the way I add details. And then if I start to press it down, uh, you can see the texture is appearing. So right now it's actually inverted. And if I push it up, then it's getting that those holes in. Uh, this kind of thing when it's uh, either white is high or black is down is always something that gets me. i never sure what's what. So what we can do is we can just create an invert layer that will just affect our mask here and that will be our mask f to press the stuff I out and in. So I'll just export it right now. Right, so I brought it over here and now if I drag it inside I get my holes and I have some distortion going on mainly because I have ignore back faces on so if I turn it off I won't have that stuff going on. And what about make it a little bit more expressive? Well, that's way too much. Well, though, you kind of get this pretty cool. Again, this is a power of voxels that distortions here they don't look as bad as you would have had distortions on a um, on a mesh. Uh, so you can always play around, cut it out. I'm not really cutting. I'm just trying to use the alpha I've created as much as I can. Then I can switch to the inverted alpha and push this stuff out with the holes. There is no invert button in the brush settings, at least I haven't seen any. But okay, here we, we go. We have a um, little type of asteroid. And I'll just cut it out uh, using just the cut tool. and then smash it again. And then turn on something, some shading and some kind of bit more interesting cavity material. And yeah, so you get, uh, if you create this cool rock alphas from your own you know scans or from scans like from me uh, you can get uh, this stuff out really quickly uh, I will also talk about a bit more advanced way of getting your alpha out which is more time-consuming but I really want to cover it as well but this is the for me this is a go-to method to do them so let's see you in the next video